Okay, welcome back to So You Think You Can Take the Derivative. And this is the second practice. And just like last time, you guys can go to the description because of the file over there. You guys can go print it out and practice the questions. In this video, I will go over these three examples with you guys. And for the second file, we'll be talking about the derivatives of inverse functions and also the implicit differentiation. So be sure you guys do lots of practice questions. And I will also make video solutions for the other questions as well. But before you guys watch any of the solutions, be sure you guys try the questions first, including this one. So with that being said, please pause the video and try these questions first. Okay, I'm going to just show you guys how to do the first one right here first. All of the questions are just, you take the derivative of this, you take the derivative of that, and so on. And you have to remember all of the you know, quotient rule, chain rule, product rule, power rule, and things like that. All right, take a look at the first one. Our function is ln of x times square root of x squared plus one. And you should ask yourself, is there any algebra that we can do to simplify the expressions first? In this case, yes, because here we have x times square root of x squared plus one. And by one of the natural log properties, we can break this apart. We can rewrite this as f of x as ln of the first, which is just x inside, and then we add it with ln of the second. And just like what I've been telling you guys, almost always in calculus, we look at the square root as the one-half power. So I will look at this as parentheses with x squared plus one inside raised to the one-half power, like that. And we notice here, when we have ln of something to a power, we can actually bring the power to the front. But in this case, do not minus one, because this is just the natural log property. This is not the power rule for the derivative. Even though there's a nice connection, but that's for another video. Anyway, we are still just doing the algebra. This right here is f of x is ln x and we will have the plus one half ln and the x squared plus one inside, and this is it. And now we can go ahead and do our derivative. I will write down f prime of x for the derivative, and the derivative of ln x is one over x. And be sure, you see that the derivative of the inside function, derivative of x is just one. You multiply by one, doesn't matter. Now we are going to differentiate the second function right here, right? Because you just add the derivative of the first and the derivative of the second. For this one, you, here you have the one half. It's just a constant multiple, write it down. And the derivative of ln of something is you first write down one over that thing in the denominator. And then the chain rule says you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. This time, the derivative of the inside is 2x. So it matters. You have to write it down and multiply. Earlier, once again, the derivative of the inside is just 1. So you multiply by 1. Doesn't matter, right? And once again, this is just a sum, which is much nicer. You can just take the derivative of the first, and you add it with the derivative of the second. If you look at the product, you have to use the product rule. So don't do that. And the moral behind this is that you should do algebra as much as possible before you do calculus. Anyway, here is the calculus part, and then algebra is still coming back. Here we are going to cancel this two, and we'll see that the first term is one over x, and then the second term, we have one times one times x, which is just x on the top, over, this is x squared plus one. And let's go ahead and combine these two fractions for the first one, I will need to have this for the denominator as well. So let me multiply by x squared plus 1 on the bottom and also on the top. And then for the second one, I need to multiply by this x. So let me multiply by this x on the bottom and also on the top. And now we can put them together. They will have the same denominator, namely x times x squared plus plus 1, and then for the top, you do 1 times this times that, it's just x squared plus 1, and 
the second part right here is you add it with x times x, which is x squared. And then is there anything else that we can do? Yeah, x squared plus x squared, we can end up that with 2x squared and then plus 1 or over this x and x squared plus 1. And with that, this right here is it. The derivative of that function is this. Now moving on to the second one. We are going to differentiate sine of inverse tangent x. Even though you can rewrite this as an algebraic expression, but in that case, you'll see it's actually much harder. We are just going to look at this expression as how it is, and then we'll differentiate. For the y right here, the derivative of that, you can either write down y prime or dy dx. I will just write down y prime. Now, the outside function is sine of some, sine, right? Sine of something like this. You ask yourself, What's the derivative of sine? It's cosine, right? So we will first put down cosine. And the input stays the same. So let me just bring down inverse tangent inside. And the chain rule says we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. And what's the derivative of inverse tangent x? That's something you have to remember. And the answer to that is 1 over 1 plus x squared, okay? So this is it. This is the calculus part. But as I said, when you have an inverse trig function inside of a regular trig function, you can actually write it as an algebraic expression so that the expression is less intimidating. Now we are going to do that to this right here. And to do so, we will first pay attention to the inverse tangent. Because you have to remember, inverse trig function represents an angle. So I can say we have an angle, maybe I'll use theta for it. Theta is equal to inverse tangent x. From here, you can see that I can take the regular tangent x on both sides. When this is true, we can say that regular tangent of theta is equal to x. So all I did is you take the inverse you take the original tangent x on both sides. And then, once you look at this right here, you see tangent theta is equal to x. Let's look at this as a fraction. x as x over 1. Because from here, we can see that on the top, based on the definition of tangent, this is the opposite side of a right triangle. Likewise, this is the adjacent side of a right triangle. From here, let's construct that right triangle. It's much easier to see what this is going to be. Anyway, so let's draw the right triangle this way, put the right angle here, and put the angle theta here. So this is going to be consistent. Just try to do this all the time. This is just like a little uh, device to help us figure out what this is. All right, the opposite for this angle is this side, which is x. And the adjacent, it's going to be right here. And we also need to figure out the hypotenuse, which is this right here. And this is not bad, because we can just take the square root, and then you do this square plus that square. 1 squared is 1, plus x squared is just x squared. So that's what we have. And now, we had this earlier, y prime, which is cosine. And the inverse tangent, as what I said right here, it was theta. And then we multiply this by 1 over 1 plus x squared. And to figure out what cosine theta is, all we have to do is refer back to this triangle and do the usual business. We will see. Cosine theta, theta is right here. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Namely, we get 1 over that. So that's the square root of 1 plus x squared. And then you can just multiply this right here together, like that. And finally, depends on how you want to finish this, you can just put a parenthesis with 1 on the top over square root of 1 plus x squared, and then times the parenthesis 1 plus x squared. That's totally fine. 
or you can also just write this down as a power form, or you can do this as this as the uh, <laughs> first power and then just add the powers up together, or things like that. But I'm going to write it down for you guys as one over square root, and this is going to be one plus x squared, and then to the third power like that. I ran out of space, so I'll just put this down for you guys. And by now, you guys should have done a lot of examples similar to this already. Write this down as the one-half power, and you do one-half plus the first power, so it gets three over two power. Over two power is a square root, and then the three is still right here. Right? So that's the explanation. Right? Anyway, so just play around with the algebra right here. That's the answer for that. Lastly, we have square root of x plus y and the minus the square root of x minus y is equal to 1. Where is the y? Well, maybe I should say, where are the y's? Here and here. And do you think it's easy or not to isolate the y? Maybe or maybe not. I don't know. But it's okay because we have implicit differentiation to back us up, right? I will just look at this equation as how it is, and I'll go ahead and differentiate this with respect to x. And we are saying that y is a function of x. Okay, keep that in mind. So here we go. Differentiate square root of something, we first get 1 over 2 square root of the things inside. We we'll put it here, x plus y. And the chain rule says we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So we multiply by the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. And then we add it with y, right? And the derivative of y with respect to y, sorry, the derivative of y with respect to x, it's the dy dx. I'm going to write down dy dx because if I write this down as y prime, it looks like y to the first power. I don't like that, so I'll take some time to write dy dx. So this might be slightly confusing, but it's okay because we have another chance to practice that right here. We are going to subtract, and we'll differentiate this guy. Once again, screw something, so we are going to have 1 over 2 square root of this inside, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside because of the chain rule. So we multiply by the derivative of x with respect to x is 1. Minus the derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx, just like that. So I'll just write down dy dx. OK? And then this is equal to the derivative of 1, which is 0. The derivative of a constant 1 is 0. So this right here is what we have. It's OK, let's just take some time to rest and let's take a look. How can we isolate the dy dx? Well, notice we have this times this and that, right? So let's distribute. Take this term in the front and then distribute that. And just write this down carefully and do it gently. Anyway, this times 1 is just that, namely 1 over 2 square root of x plus y. This times that is plus, let's put this down first, 1 over 2 square root of x plus y, and then let's write down the dy dx like this. And then do the same thing right here. Take this, distribute, distribute. Negative this times that is negative 1 over 2 square root of x minus y. And then negative times negative dy dx becomes plus this and dy dx. So let me just write this down, x minus y, and then we have the dy dx, and this is equal to 0. And here's the usual deal. Notice this term has the dy dx. Similarly, this term has dy dx as well. We are going to keep these two terms on one side. And of course, let's just maintain them to be on the left-hand side. And we will bring this and that to the other side. So let's work on this two first. I am actually going to factor out the dy dx and then put it at the end of the parentheses. 
So let me actually write this down as parentheses, which this goes first. 1 over 2 square root of x plus y. And then plus that. 1 over 2 square root of x minus y. And then I will put the dy dx at the end. And the reason I want to put down the dy dx at the end is because this notation is the derivative. It looks so alike, it, it looks so similar to the ddx. But ddx means to take the derivative. But we took the derivative already. So let me just not confuse this notation and that. And the easy way to do it is put this at the end. If you put this in the front, it seems that we still have to do the derivative. So, but just a way of writing it. Anyway, so we combine these two right here. And then I will first bring this to the other side because if I brought the negative first, it becomes positive. So I will have 1 over 2 square root of x minus y. And I bring this to the other side. It becomes minus 1 over 2 square root of x plus y, like that. So, so far so good. And now, to isolate dy dx, we just have to divide it by this. I know it's like a monster expression, but you know, you can handle it, I can handle it. You know, we will take care of each other, so all that stuff. Let's write this down first. dy dx is equal to this thing on the top, so I will put down 1 over 2 square root of x minus y minus 1 over 2 square root of x plus y and do this really carefully and then all over this thing in the denominator so that's 1 over 2 square root of x plus y and then we add it with 1 over 2 square root of x minus y like that this is a pretty horrible complex fraction. How can we simplify this? <laughs> let's see. All of the little denominators, they all have a 2. So let's go ahead, multiply the top and bottom by that 2. OK, so that will take care of the 2s. But notice we have square root of x minus y and also square root of x plus y. So those will be multiplied as well. So let's do that. Square root of x minus y square root of x plus y, square root of x minus y, square root of x plus y. And now let's see what we are going to end up. Usually, when we multiply the top and bottom by the least common denominator, we wouldn't have any more complex fractions. So we'll see. OK, here we go. We take this times that. Two's cancel out. This and that cancel out. So we have this times 1, which is just that. And that's pretty neat. We just have a square root of x plus y. And continue, we take this times that, negative, and then 2 cancel out, this and that cancel out, we will just have this. So that's square root of x minus y. It's pretty neat, huh? And then on the denominator, we take this times that, 2 cancel out, the square root of x plus y cancel out, so we have this thing right here left. So that's square root of x minus y. Lastly, plus 2 cancel out. This and that cancel out. We have that left, namely square root of x plus y. How cool is this? And of course, if you would like, you can multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate. And just let me know in the comment down below how that goes. But I think I will finish it right here. Anyway. Hopefully this video helps, and once again, be sure you guys go download the file, and then I will have the solution videos in the description, and um, yeah, you can practice this. And in Calc 1, it's a lot of differentiation, and also a lot of algebra, just like this, right? So be sure you guys spend the time putting the effort to do lots of practice questions. And if you guys find my videos too helpful, please subscribe and also share my videos with your friends, classmates, students, teachers, and things like that. But anyway, as always, that's it.